He's a member of the Technology Integration Group, team leader for File and Storage Systems Task Group. Uh, he's also a member of the Program Committee and, you know, has saved us on numerous occasions. SARP Oral. Good morning, everyone. Um, first, this is a continuation of what we have been doing for the last three years. So I think this presentation is an update from last year's. Um, there are some new things, but there are some old things as well. And um, I'm just a spokesperson for the effort. Um, before I start, the nice folks from Oak Ridge, would you please rise up? Dave, Jason, Dustin, Blake, thank you. Um, the, and, oh, James over here. Um, Galen and Sudarshan, are you in? Nope, okay. Um, these are the guys who actually did the work. I'm the just um, puppeteer talking about it. Um, Dave Vazel, are you here? Okay, would you please rise up? Um, he is also our grant worker, thank you. So this talk is about our next generation spider file system. And your PowerPoint has died. I'm sorry? Your PowerPoint has died. I'm s oh, here you go. Okay. So um, I'll try to wrap, the, wrap this up quickly. Um, this talk will be about SPIDER2, our next generation SPIDER file system. So I'll start with our first original SPIDER file system and give you an update on what we have done up to date on that one and continue with SPIDER2. So we deploy, deployed SPIDER in 2008. At the time, it was the fastest luster file system in the world. Um, we designed it to perform at 240 gigabytes per second. Um, we had four MDSs, 192 OSSs, um, 1344 OSTs. It was a center-wide shared resource at the OLCF um, serving all of our supercomputers and computing clusters and et cetera. Um, <clears throat> Jaguar was the main consumer. Um, it had more than 18,000 clients. Um, it, had a, it was a two petaflops machine with 300 terabytes main memory. Um, so we finished deploying SPIDER in 2008. We commissioned it, we rolled it into production. And right after that, um, we said, okay, let's start working on SPIDER 2, the next SPIDER project. Um, and Galen just came in. So I got everybody rise up from OLCF because this is the continuation of the work. Um, we missed you. So there's Galen, okay. Um, Galen was instrumental um, up until he switched roles at OLCF for this SPIDER2 project as well. So um, what were the motivations for SPIDER? Um, we wanted to create a single shared storage pool um, for all OLCF resources. Um, we wanted to provide aggregate performance and scalability for all OLCF resources at the lab. Um, we wanted something that's resilient against the system failures. So when a machine goes down, your data won't go down with the machine. It should be accessible through other means at the um, center. And we wanted to um, allow growth of the storage pool by adding on later on to it without disrupting the services. So, the original SPIDER met all of these design requirements, and um, when it came designing SPIDER2, we found out that um, these design motivations were still valid. So um, what happened since then? We upgraded Jaguar. Um, the new machine is called Titan. Um, some of you might have heard about it. Um, it's still in the acceptance. It's a um, Nice machine with, again, 18,688 nodes. Um, it's a 27 petaflops machine. Um, it has 18688 um, NVIDIA Kepler GPUs in it. Um, the interesting part for us here is it's doubled in scalar system memory. It's now 600 terabytes. 
the total system memory size is 710 terabytes, including the GPUs. So what happens when you upgrade from a 300 terabyte machine to much more powerful um, 710 terabytes machine? Your I.O. demands increase. Um, therefore, we decided we'll need a bigger, better, faster, nicer file system. And um, at the time, our original design goal stated that we should be, um, we should be able to allow storage and in <clears throat> increase the storage pool. But um, early on, we decided that replacing Spider-1 was more cost effective um, because of increased I.O. requirements and increased maintenance costs on Spider. So um, I'm going to skip these parts real fast, but this is what a Titan Cray XK7 compute node looks like. Um, there's the scaler and there's the GPU, and they are all nicely connected to Cray Gemini interconnect. Um, the specs are there. Um, the blue lanes in the middle is the Gemini high-speed interconnect. Um, what's Titan used for? It's an open science machine. Um, it delivers breakthrough for science for DOE industry and the nation. Um, blah, blah, blah. Let's go over. Um, we have some early science applications on Titan, material science, combustion, climate change, etc. So these are all actually running applications and generating I.O. on Titan. So um, coming to Spider's story, our efforts started for upgrading st uh, Spider's um, in late 2009. Um, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Actually, it's a decathlon because you have to wrangle so many things to make it happen. Um, you have to work on so many different avenues. Um, it really becomes a huge project. Um, so on left, you see our completed efforts. Um, we did some studies on understanding what actually Spider does, what we observe on Spider. Um, then we evaluated for last <clears throat> two and a half years what are the available storage and file system technologies out, out there that we can use for um, deploying Spider 2. Then um, we spent quite a lot of time on writing and releasing the RFP and then we did the evaluation of the responses. So these are all tasks done. Um, the tasks, um, the red box on the right hand side are ongoing and pending efforts. So we are in the deployment and installation phase. So we are receiving hardware um, every day and we are installing them. Um, next, we'll go through the acceptance and then next, there will be the integration phase. We'll commission the file system and then we'll roll it into production. So um, I'll cut these pieces short again um, because they were in, a, in last year's presentation. So. We try to understand Spider much better before we design Spider 2. Um, and we did a series of studies. We published um, some papers. If you are interested, um, you can go and check them out. And um, the last paper listed over there, a next generation parallel file system for the OLCF in Cray user group last year. Um, that's a comprehensive summarization of everything we have learned so far. And the nice figure at the bottom is our um, design cycle as we see it. So it starts with collecting the requirements, understanding how your demands. Um, then it goes into design, we architect and build the storage system, and then we validate, um, we roll it into operation maintenance, and then go back to the first circle, which will give us a starting point for Spider 3, hopefully. So what did we learn about um, Spider, the first original spider. Um, there's congestion problem. Um, thanks to Dave Dillo and his magic, we were able to um, avoid it up to a point and we had 30% performance increase by just um, redesigning some pieces of the software without adding any hardware to the system. And that was a nice boost. Um, you might have the term um, fine-grained routing, that's it. Um, what else we learned about Spider? 42% um, uh, of our I.O. workload is actually reads. We were thinking that um, I.O. is mostly write dominant, 
but if you look at it at the end of the day, it's like a 60-40% split that we have a heavy read um, activity on our file system. What else we learned from Spider? Um, we had a substantial amount of small I.O. requests. Um, the left figure is the PDF, the right figure is the CDF of our um, I.O. request sizes. And um, however you look at it, there are a bunch of small requests um, in our I.O. mix. So, come on. Um, our evaluation efforts. Um, I don't know which one is which. One of is Dave, one of is um, me, but I'll let you guys figure it out. But this really looks like our um, evaluation environments. We are creepy. Uh, so, based on our um, understanding of the um, evaluation efforts, um, we decided that um, just by running stack I.O. benchmarks out there um, was not going to do it. So we decided we needed a new benchmark suite. So we wrote, we put together a new benchmark suite, and we decided that it should be comprehensive. It should have a block I.O. portion, and it should have a file systems portion. Um, so um, we wrote a new benchmark called Fair Leo. It's um, based around libAIO libraries, and then we put um, wrappers around the Fairlio. Fairlio is a block engine that does sequential random reads writes to um, any block devices. So that's our block IO <coughs> benchmark. And then we took the OBD filter survey um, because early on we decided that Luster will be our choice for Spider 2 as well, so we didn't have to look very far. Um, we took the OBD filter and we put wrappers and changed the parameter set and we came up with um, a new way of running OBD filter based on what we have learned from our um, understanding of IO workload characterization on Spider 1. So we tuned those two. Um, so what does the benchmark suite does? Um, it's fully automated. You provide um, a list of devices and it runs for itself for hours and days and um, it kills the file system or the storage system. And then it catalogs and stores the results and plots them for you with GNU plots. So it's already in one place that you just look at the pretty pictures and say, yeah, yeah, it sucks. And then um, we released this in 2010 to public. We shared it. Um, with the public and um, our vendors. And so far we received positive feedback. Positive feedback um, being mostly like, wow, you really trashed the file system or the storage system, which we think it's a positive feedback. So um, we put together um, a storage evaluation test bed. Um, we tried to access the storage and file system technologies before they were GA. Um, and um, we try to work with our file and storage um, vendors, friends, partners. Before they release their product, we try to embed them into our, um, we try to embed ourselves into their um, design cycles and um, evaluate their products, learn more about them, provide feedbacks to them, um, what is missing, what can be done better, etc. So, um, and the right hand side is our testbed environment, really. We dissect people over there. Um, we embed and um, we evaluated embedded or integrated solutions. Um, we evaluated block solutions. Uh, we evaluated host to storage network solutions or host to compute um, network technologies. Um, we at some point couldn't get our hands on a missing piece of technology, so we made a site visit to a friendly. Um, HPC site and learn more about the um, missing technology at there. So we really spend time on evaluating whatever we can get our hands on under the sun in terms of what we can use to build Spider 2. We spend like two and a half years on this one. So after all of this, um, we started, it's time to write the RFP, put our requirements all together. Um, so we started writing in fall of 2010. We gathered requirements, um, we started writing the document, and um, when we thought we were ready to release it, then unfortunately there was a flooding in Thailand, and this 
prices spiked up, so we had to wait until they come back down. And there was some following that um, budget sensitivity issues, so it got delayed and delayed, and we finally released our RFP in late 2012, and um, we started getting responses back in December 2012 as well. So, what were our requirements? Um, we asked for 1.2 terabytes per second block level performance for sequential writes and reads. We wanted at least one terabyte per second luster level aggregate performance. We asked for 240 gigabytes per second block level random write and read performance. We asked for minimum 18 petabytes of storage after rated. Uh, we asked for SAS or IBFDR hosted storage connectivity. We didn't close the door to fiber channel, but we said we'll prefer these two. Um, more on, um, we asked for parity check on read. We asked for every read operation should be checked before they were returned to the user and verify that they are reading the correct data from the disks. And um, we asked for um, performance under disk rebuilds to be a certain level, um, et cetera. So it was a lengthy document. And um, we got some responses. And um, after evaluating, carefully evaluating the responses, we selected DataDirect's network proposal um, to use for our SPIDER2 project. Um, so after negotiation, we ended up getting the system that's spec'd out there. So we, got, we asked for two things. One, the big file system, which we dubbed as Scalable Storage System, or SSS. And we asked for a test and development system, so we can start developing tools and features and con test configurations, et cetera, before rolling the big system into production on the TDS system, test and development system. So the technology is based on um, DDS SFA 12K 40 um, system. Um, for the SSS, we are getting 36 of them. Um, each will have 562 terabyte nearline SAS disks. Um, there will be roughly um, 20,000 drives in the SSSS. Um, the after rates, capacity will be 32 petabytes, and um, we are expecting greater than one terabyte per second aggregate performance. Um, test and development system, as I said, is a smaller replica of the SSS. Um, it's, again, SFA 12K, um, InfiniBand FDR connected all around, um, storage to host, host um, to the computes or to the other OLCF resources. Um, it will have 200, um, 280 two terabyte nearline SAS drives in the S um, TDS system. So, putting this all together, the facts about Spider 2. Um, it will be, it will have 32 petabytes of capacity after rates. Um, how much of that will be presented to the users after formatting? It's yet to be seen. We are expecting one greater than one terabyte per second aggregate performance. We'll have 288 luster OSSs on the system, eight per each 12K couplet. Um, we'll have four MDSs and two MGSs. Um, we will be running luster 2.4 all around on this system. So we might use DNE down the road. We are planning to use DNE down the road, so um, hence the four MDSs. It's configured in four rows. Each row has nine 12K couplets and one infrastructure couplet. Infrastructure couplet, um, infrastructure rack will have all of our um, OSSs, um, top of the rack switches, Ethernet switches, etc. They will be all embedded in every row. Um, we'll have 208 port core FDR switches to connect. Um, provide connectivity to other OLCF resources. Um, we'll have 36, 36 port FDR IB switches which will provide connectivity directly to Titan. And um, oh, there's a type over there. We'll have 432 luster Titan LNET routers um, that will um, provide the connectivity between the Spider 2 file system and the Titan system. So this will be our 
Spider 2 architecture, roughly. Um, there will be a Zion, scalable IO network 2 in middle, um, connecting everything together. The right-hand side is the Titan Cray XK7 machine with 432 IO routers. Um, the left-hand side <coughs> will be the OLCF3 scalable storage system, or SPIDER2. Um, there is nothing new here. Not that anything I haven't said. Everything will be InfiniBand FDR connected. So this um, is a graph that shows our um, expected speeds and um, how they are fitting all together in terms of um, interconnect speeds, etc. There's nothing over there. So what we are delivering to users at the end of the day. Um, this is what's important. We are a center that is um, missioned to enable open science for DOE and industry and um, nonprofits, etc. So we have to serve our scientific user base. Um, we are not just building the fastest system, fastest computing system, or fastest fast storage system because we can. We have to do something useful with that. So we are trying to uh, make our users' work cycle, computational work cycle, much more um, easier to use, uh, much more efficient. So we are trying to deliver more than one terabyte per second luster scratch space to our users. Um, right now, we have um, the first generation spider, which um, if I remember correctly, um, Jason can correct me, we have um, all around more than 350 million files on it, and it's more than 80% full. So, and it's a five-year-old um, hardware sitting on the floor, so it's coming to end of its life. So we have to act fast and deliver something new to our, our users. So the system, as I said, will be based on Luster 2.4. Um, and um, it has Y2.4 because it's the next maintenance bridge. Um, we want to be on that one. Um, it includes features we want and require, like large sprite, uh, stripe count, which is important for us to increase the shared file performance. Um, it has distributed namespace, um, so we don't have to chop up a huge storage area into smaller file systems just to increase the scalability of metadata performance. You can keep it as a single namespace and chop it up into smaller MDSs instead. Um, it has horizontal and vertical um, metadata performance improvements in 2.4, which we want. Um, it has imp imperative recovery, which we really want to shorten our recovery time. So all of these put together, we are really um, pushing to get to 2.4. Um, <clears throat> according to our plans, we will not be using 2.4 on, um, uh, we will not be using DNA right out of the box, but we want to be able to roll into DNA down the road. Um, right when we start the file system, we won't enable multiple MDSs, um, but we will be doing that gradually down the road. So our integration efforts. Um, since 2.4 is a new beast, we have been doing extensive testing on Luster 2.4. So our tests can be categorized into two broad classes. Um, we do small scale tests. Um, James Simmons, raise your hand. He's our um, main luster tester. He's our miracle worker. Um, so he is running around the clock small scale tests. We have a single Cray XK7 cabinet, which is called Arthur. And we have some storage in our test bed that's dedicated to that one. And we have a luster 2.4 file system, which James tears apart and rebuilds practically daily, um, and he tests, he run tests around the clock um, to check for stability, regression, performance, analysis, et cetera, on this small scale test. So <clears throat> we try to do early detection of um, problems of, and bugs, and we try to correct them, send out fixes and patches upstream. And once we have sufficient confidence built in that, a particular um, version is stable enough for large-scale tests, um, we roll it into our large-scale test schedule. And our large-scale um, test is actually running the 2.4 on the Titan scale. So we 
deploy it on Titan and try to see how long will it hold on Titan. Um, we don't have high expectations. We know it will break at some point, but um, we want to see how long it can hold itself until it breaks down. So <clears throat> roughly our schedule tells us that um, we can do one large scale test per month. Um, we so far did um, three tests until the beginning of 2013. Um, we are creating extensive um, post-mortem analysis reports on after every test. Um, we detail what we have done, open bugs, problems, and send it out to um, our nice Luster vendors. And with their collaboration, we get patches and fixes and et cetera. And we roll them into our small scale um, testing and test it, and then the cycle goes back on. Um, we did some, under our integration efforts, we also did some InfiniBand FDR testing on Cray. Um, we found out that um, by using Mellanox um, Connect IB cards and with some tricks, um, we can get up to four gigabytes per second per um, Cray um, LNET router, so, which is nice. Um, we are trying to get that into production, um, push Cray and our other vendors to make that happen. So, our schedule. Um, we have all the infrastructure delivered except the long-haul cables to connect our Titan to our um, Spider 2 file system. Um, our block storage is being delivered. Um, we'll finish the delivery in early May. Um, we are working on releasing a Luster support um, contract, RFP. Um, we are looking for last, uh, level one, two, and three supports. Um, so if you are interested in going after that RFP, which will come out at any days, um, please send an email to our purchase officer. Um, the email is up there. Um, follow up, we'll go into block level acceptance, um, which we are hoping to be completed by the end of May, hopefully. Um, we'll do the <clears throat> file system integration by late August, and. <clears throat> we'll commission the file system by sometime in September. Pretty pictures. Dave. Dave uh, is kind enough um, to install our um, DDM pieces and infrastructure pieces together. And um, you see the old spider um, plug up top over there, which is not reflecting the reality, but it's a good nostalgia up there. So. This is what it looks like, and it's coming along piece by piece, row by row. So, if you have any questions, I'll field them. Sure. Thanks. A question about uh, fine grained routing. Um, is there any, are you aware of any development effort that? Uh, um, could bring some of the benef performance benefits of fine grained routing, uh, say to customers that are s s at a smaller scale that don't want to introduce so many LNETs or additional configuration complexity? Is it, it seems like maybe there's some kind of syntax that could be added to uh, or LNET module options or some intelligence, additional intelligence built into LNET that could make this complexity less. I'm not aware of any other um, development efforts, but I will let Dave Dillo answer that question in more detail for you. He is just sitting right in front of you. I am completely unaware of any efforts to that end, but that would be an excellent proposal to bring to the uh, technical working group because that does sound like a need that could be filled. Any other questions? Yes. I heard uh, you spoken about uh, four MDS, both for uh, Spider 1 and uh, Spider 2. Then at the end uh, of the presentation, you were saying that you are not going to take advantage of the DNA uh, feature of the version. So uh, I didn't understand uh, the reason for having multiple MDS and whether, they are, whether it is possible to have multiple MDS with, for example, with the version 2.1, so with one of the production versions that is already available uh, for the general uh, public. So we are going to use 2.4, not 2.1, to start with, and down the road we will use DNE, but not right at the very beginning. 
Um, we want to play a little bit conservative over there. Um, we'll start with a single MDS server, but when we buy hardware, we want them to be identical, so we are buying four of them. Oh, so so you, are, you are starting with just one MDS? Just okay. one MDS. Okay. Yes. I mean, that's the bare minimum you can do. So okay. we'll start with one. And then, um, actually, we haven't done extensive testing on DNA. So we don't know how that works. So we are trying to test out the file system, how stable it is, how scalable it is, how performant it is. Are there any regressions that will haunt us? We are testing those. Um, DNA will be a second phase of extensive testing. And when we have sufficient confidence built in it, we will roll it into production slowly, but not right now. Thank you. Your um, four gigab gigabytes per second on a client sounds really good. Was that on your small scale test, or was that end to end all the way through the LNet to, um, to a simulated client? I will let Dave DeLow answer that one, but it was not a small scale test. It was directly measured from Cray Titan. Go ahead. So that's not to a client, that's on a router node, which will have a lot less overhead. Um, clients still remain a work in progress. On the question about the fine grain routing, there'll be a white paper coming out from the CUG user group that talks about how Cray's given a good shove in that direction. They've kind of come up with a configuration syntax that takes a lot of that FGR into account um, and some tools around doing online cable validation and LNET checking and you know all of that kind of fun stuff. I don't know what their plans are on releasing the software per se, but at least there's a, a pretty good paper on, on, on talking that forward. There's one more from Andreas. Yeah, so there's actually um, a, a patch that's in Garrett about uh, route priorities that was developed at uh, Fujitsu and is, you know, on the cusp of landing. So I guess it, it would behoove us to get Nick to look at that patch because, you know, we want to make sure that if we're adding in priorities and things and they've already done work too, that, you know, they're going in the right direction. <laughs> wow. All right. Sarp Orr, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks.